The Supreme Court issued a historic ruling on LGBTQ civil rights as officials across the country move toward police reform. Meanwhile, the president is defending the way he walked down a ramp. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Let's just get this out of the way first. The president, as we all know, is a weird man. Deeply weird. And on Saturday, he once again showed off his fundamental weirdness after a speech at West Point when he slowly descended a ramp like an old man being walked across the street by a Boy Scout. You know, for a guy who constantly talks about how tough he is, he sure walks like a baby deer on a frozen pond. What is wrong with him? Are we gonna have to get him an acorn stair lift? Acorn one. I watched that and for the first time thought, Maybe he does have bone spurs, naturally. This prompted a lot of speculation about the president's health. Have his bones been hollowed out by years of artificial sweetener and asbestos? Is his blood mostly ketchup and Diet Coke? Still, we, we are not gonna speculate, but if Donald Trump saw someone else walking like that, you know he would definitely speculate. He'd be on Twitter all day saying things like, an extremely credible source tells me the president has hamburger leg, must investigate. And yet, Trump couldn't help but spend time responding to the speculation on Twitter with a truly ludicrous explanation. The president tweeted, quote, The ramp that I descended after my West Point commencement speech was very long and steep, had no handrail, and most importantly, was very slippery. The last thing I was going to do is fall for the fake news to have fun with. The final 10 feet I ran down to level ground. Momentum! Exclamation point. Wow, so liberals, young people, and women hate you, and now we have to add ramp designers to the list. Okay, so let me get this straight. The ramp was long, steep, and slippery. It was a slip and slide. You're saying the West Point ramp was a slip and slide. It was very treacherous ramp, coated with oil, littered with banana peels, and due to a luggage mix-up, the only footwear available to me were a pair of Heelys. Heelys very, you gotta be careful on your Heelys. So that's what the president chose to spend his time focusing on this weekend. Now, generally speaking, good news has been hard to come by these days. So when the Republican dominated Supreme Court handed down a landmark decision this morning on whether federal civil rights law prohibits discrimination against LGBTQ people, I was ready for disappointment. Then this happened. A major civil rights decision out of the United States Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has ruled that LGBT Americans are protected by the anti-discrimination laws of this country at their workplaces. This is a major civil rights opinion uh, in the Supreme Court. It was written uh, by Justice Neil Gorsuch and joined by Chief Justice John Roberts. The decision now is clear from the Supreme Court. They have uh, issued a ruling that now bans discrimination by employers against transgender individuals and gay individuals. This is uh, a key, a landmark ruling for gay and transgender individuals. It was actually authored by conservative justice Neil Gorsuch. He was joined by the Chief Justice John Roberts as well as the liberal justices here. It is a massive victory for transgender and gay individuals. What? Re something good happened? This is, this is incredible. Break out the champagne. What? Oh, we don't have any champagne. What about wine? Do we have any wine? We drank all the wine. Is there anything, anything we could, uh, that's it? That's literally the only thing we have? Okay. Break out the canned tuna, everybody, because it's time to celebrate. That's right, the Supreme Court ruled that federal civil rights law forbids discrimination against gay and transgender Americans. It's incredible news, and it's especially great because the one thing Trump could say he had delivered for his extremist base was the Supreme Court, and now even the Supreme Court is bucking them. When Trump heard the news, he probably needed a glass of water. If only he could get it up to his mouth. Dude, what's up? This is like watching one of those improv games where a performer puts their arms through someone else's. This whole time, has it been President Trump and Ryan Stiles? Ryan Stiles, attic reference. Can't do that in the studio. Can someone just get Trump a really long straw so we never have to see this again? So this was a thrilling and momentous ruling. And it comes just days after the Trump administration announced that it was rolling back Obama-era civil right protections for transgender Americans in healthcare. Because anytime Trump has an opportunity to be an ass, he takes it. I'd say the Trump presidency is like a slippery slope toward authoritarianism, but given how bad it is at it, it's more like a slippery ramp. Not the last ramp reference, by the way. I'd love to tell you it was, but we are going to circle back and, and call it back one more time. You want to try and see it coming? Maybe you can see it coming. So there was good news today on LGBTQ civil rights, and at the same time, we're also seeing a flurry of legislation and a massive shift in public opinion on systemic racism and police brutality. 
amid the historic Black Lives Matter protests sweeping the nation. Thanks to the unprecedented outpouring of public pressure in the form of mass demonstrations, officials across the country have been moving toward police reform in ways big and small. The Minneapolis City Council passed a resolution to disband the police and invest in community-based public safety programs. The governor of Iowa signed a police reform bill that was passed in one day. The Louisville Metro Council banned no-knock warrants. New York State repealed a law that kept police brutality records secret. Confederate statues across the country have been toppled. And cities and states are barring police from using chokeholds and tear gas. Now, there's a wide spectrum there. Some of these moves are good first steps, others are clearly insufficient. But I have to say, in the year 2020, banning chokeholds and taking down monuments to white supremacy should be the absolute bare minimum. We should be satisfied with that. It's like going in for a checkup and your doctor saying, just so you know, I graduated high school. People have been pouring into the streets for weeks, demanding far-reaching changes and a fundamental rethinking of how much policing we really need and what, if anything, we need policing for, which is why the defund police movement has gained steam. In New York City, for example, the city council has proposed plan that would cut $1 billion from the NYPD budget that could be put to use elsewhere, like in housing, healthcare, homeless and mental health services, or delousing the Times Square Elmo. We're, we might need another billion. Or how about we spend that money on a study to find out what the hell those liquid nitrogen tanks are doing in the street corners in Manhattan? I mean, I've lived in the city for two decades. I have no idea. No idea what those things are for. They look like a bonus item you'd unlock in Grand Theft Auto. The more people hear about the reality of policing in this country, the more they agree that small reforms at the margins are not enough. We need to defund and scale back policing altogether. For example, here's an insane headline from 2014 that resurfaced recently. LA schools police will return grenade launchers but keep rifles armored vehicle. Oh good, I'm glad they returned the grenade launchers. Also, why the did they have grenade launchers? Were they providing backup to the hall monitors? We have a student roaming the hall with no bathroom pass. I repeat, no bathroom pass. Throughout this crisis, Americans have witnessed police abuse their authority with impunity and sometimes in the most absurd and inexplicable ways, as Illinois Congressman Bobby Rush discovered recently. Last week, the congressman got word that his office in Chicago had been burglarized. But when he went to look at the surveillance tape, this is what he found. A group of up to 13 police officers helping themselves to coffee, making popcorn, even napping in his office, while outside stores were being damaged and robbed. That's right, police officers broke into a congressman's office to make coffee and popcorn and take naps without checking for cameras first. Did you think bulletproof vests make you invisible? I don't know what happened, Sarge. I was wearing the vest. They treated the congressman's office the way George Costanza treated his desk. And then there's this Truly insane story from Ohio where police tried to claim protesters were showing up to demonstrations with weapons until the truth came out. Columbus police posted about a protest bus being equipped with riot gear, clubs, rocks, axes, etc. It turns out the bus belonged to hippie circus performers. The clubs were juggling clubs. The rocks were crystals and fossils. On the long list of most threatening people, the very bottom entry is people who travel with crystals and fossils. If you're walking down a dark alley, and you run into a guy with a crystal, the only thing you're at risk of is a slightly longer conversation about crystals than you probably want to have. The only thing worse than considering that a threat would be issuing a warning that a roving gang of thugs is catching people's dreams. If you hear wind chimes, run. I mean, what else do they do? Pull over a clown car and conduct a search? All right, everybody step out of the car. Yeah, you too, sir. And you, and you. And that's gotta be everybody. Okay, you too. And you, and you, and you. I'm gonna need some backup. We got we, you know, more than you think. So people have witnessed firsthand brutality and abuses of power by the police. And in response, they're pouring into the streets for mass demonstrations across the country. It's an unprecedented movement that has galvanized and swayed public opinion in which the president still clearly does not understand. What do you think the protesters, not, not the looters and the rioters, we, we're, we're intelligent enough to know the difference in right, our country, sure. right? What do you think they want? What do you think they need right now from you? So I think you had protesters for different reasons, and then you had protesting also because, you know, they just didn't know. I, I've watched. I watched it very closely. Why are you here? And they really weren't able to say. But they were there for a reason, perhaps. But uh, a lot of them really were there because they're following the crowd. 
What is wrong with you? You think the protesters were there just because they were following the crowd? First of all, this is the age of corona. I know you forgot, but it still is. Nobody's following a crowd without having a very good reason. You guys wanna walk close together and chant? Hey, that's all I need to know. Also, what do you mean some of them were there for a reason, perhaps? He's so adult, he can't even say what the reason is. He answers questions about systemic racism and police brutality with all the specificity of a mobster who knows his phone is being tapped. I'll meet you down at the place to talk about the thing. You know, for a reason. Or maybe Trump was just distracted because he knew he had to go down a ramp in two days. I'm sorry, what was the question? I was just trying to, trying to game something out in my head. You wanna do a careful step, careful step, careful, maybe a couple of real fast ones. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think that'll look cool and people will think that was a cool thing that I did. Now, as we've said before, thanks to organizers and activists doing the work on the ground in the streets, we have seen a massive shift in public opinion in favor of the Black Lives Matter movement just in a very short period of time. Public opinion appears to be moving rapidly in the direction of the protesters. Just look at this graph from the New York Times upshot. In the past two weeks, support for Black Lives Matter increased by nearly as much as it had over the previous two years. It was like lightning striking uh, when you feel that, that electricity building up in a storm. It's true, what we've seen is a lightning strike, and Trump has clearly been struck. I mean, look at him. This is why they tell you to get off the golf course when you hear thunder. Mr. President, what happened? I don't know, I was about to play a knockdown six iron into the green, and next thing I remember is waking up in the urgent care. Today we saw a historic victory for LGBTQ civil rights. And we're watching an unprecedented sea chain in public opinion on systemic racism and police brutality, and the president has decided he'd rather spend his time whining about the media coverage of the way he walked down a ramp. But clearly, in the eyes of history, Trump is the one slipping, while the people fighting for justice are the ones who have the momentum, exclamation point. This has been A Closer Look. As New York struggles to reopen, remember that we're still a city in crisis and City Harvest has been stepping up. To meet the increased need, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, Wash your hands. We love you.